Well, good morning and happy Sunday to you. It's Minister Tim here on a July 4 Sunday morning here at Yorktown, Virginia. And I'm overlooking the York River, significant in many ways and certainly very significant to the events that took place here in Yorktown at the siege in 1781. Well, as in July of 1776, a Declaration of Independence had been declared in the colonies to the ringing of church and courthouse bells. In Congress, July 4, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have been connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Well, independence had been declared at that time, but independence had not yet been had. For the war raged on, the battles continued. And as the combined forces of uh, American France laid siege to the British Army here at Yorktown, we are reminded today of the price of freedom. So our declaration declares all men are created equal and yet not all men are treated as equal. That war rages on. Some conflicts are not fought on the field of battle. Well, our declaration also states that God has endowed us all with certain unalienable rights such as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it's vital we understand first that these are not rights of entitlement. For if we believe we are entitled, then God is removed and each man decides for himself what it means to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But we understand our declaration exclaims that these rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness are endowed us by God. We must also understand that those rights are subject to God's directive and not open to man's then individual interpretations. It's by God's grace and mercy that we are offered life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Only then can we grasp what it means then that all men are created equal. Well, starting with life. What does it mean to have life, my brethren? Uh, physical birth, of course, has already taken place and that by the Lord's hand, as we, the psalmist tells us that God formed us in the womb. We found in Psalm 139, starting in verse 13, says, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperf unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continents were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. See, in God's book were written, are written all the days that were ordained for me before they ever came to be. Well, my brother, is that what we call life? Well, once when Jesus was speaking to a crowd, a woman in the crowd cried out, she said, uh, it's found in Luke's Gospel, account chapter 11, verse 27, Blessed is the womb that bore you, she said, and the breast at which you nursed. Well, the woman says, Blessed is the womb whom you were born and cared for. Well, Jesus responds in a little different way. We find in uh, verse 28, he says, But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Now, my brother, it's all true we've been physically born of the womb. Uh, to sustain life in our bodies, we need food, water, and clothing for protection against the elements, certainly. And we may think true life is being born and providing for the physical needs of the body. Is that what it means to have life? 
Well, that's not how Jesus responded. And listen to the words of Jesus as he speaks about the needs of the body, recorded in Matthew's Gospel account, chapter 6, verse 25. He says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Verses 32 and 33 of chapter 6, Matthew's Gospel account. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye need all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. See, true life is not physical birth or meeting the needs of the body. No, true life is pursuing God, his kingdom, his righteousness, and hungering and thirsting after the word of God. True life begins, therefore, with the first and the greatest commandment spoken, recorded in Matthew's Gospel account, chapter 22, verse 37. Jesus said unto them, when asked uh, what the greatest commandment, he says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Well, pursuing not the physical needs and wants to sustain the living body, rather pursue the living God, who provides us with a purposeful, purposeful and an abundant life. That, my brethren, is true life. Well, what does it mean then to have liberty? And we may be inclined to think, well, it's to do what we want to do and go where we want to go without restriction. But yet all men are not free in that regard. Hear the word of the Lord, my brethren. John's Gospel account, chapter 8, verse 31, starting there. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And then when standing uh, before Pontius Pilate on trial, uh, Jesus spoke about why he came into the world, and he says this, recorded in uh, uh, John's Gospel account, chapter 18, verse 37, he says that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And of course, Pilate's response to him was, uh, what is truth? Well, want to know about truth, Jesus had spoken to his disciples previously, and uh, one occasion he was speaking to Thomas, disciple, John's Gospel, count chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said unto him, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus says, I am the truth. He's the embodiment of truth, and their freedom for, therefore freedom as well. By faith we come to Jesus as Lord, submitting to him as the King of Kings. We surrender our own self-made kingdoms, our treasonous acts against the true King. We uh, repent of those things, and we commit to following him. When we commit to following him, we go where he directs us to go, and we uh, do what he directs us to do. The life we once lived in bondage to sin is wiped away. It's dead and gone. In Jesus, sins are forgiven, and a death penalty paid in full by Jesus on the cross. The perfect sacrifice made one time for all. See, we are set free from a life of sin. We're bound to sin before in our human nature, but in Jesus Christ, we are reborn to a new life in righteousness, the old life dead and gone. God's Holy Spirit is given to us to guide us as he brings to word, uh, as he brings to mind the words that Jesus has said. Therefore, the Apostle Paul can write to the church in Corinth uh, the words that are uh, apply to us as well. Second uh, Corinthians chapter three, verse seventeen he says, "Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty." And the Apostle John writes in his Gospel account, chapter eight, verse thirty-six. He says, speaking about Jesus, he says, "If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed." See, freedom in Jesus sets us free from sin. It does not, however, give us a license to sin. See, Paul wrote about this in his letter to the churches in Galatia. Uh, chapter 5, starting at verse 13, he says, For brethren, 
ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion for the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The God's Spirit is given to those in Jesus Christ where there is liberty, my brethren, and freedom. And not a freedom to go where you want to go and do what you want to do without restriction. No, rather an ability to live out the life God has called us to pursue in truth and righteousness and in love for one another. True liberty is found in the righteousness of God, found in Jesus Christ, His Son, and it leads us to the second uh, greatest commandment. Matthew's Gospel, count chapter 22, verse 39. The second is like unto, the, unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. See, because of his great love for us, Jesus laid down his life for us on the cross and offers freedom to those that come to him for the forgiveness of sin. John's Gospel, count chapter 15, verse 13 says, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That's true liberty, my brethren. Liberty found in freedom in Jesus Christ. Well, what does it mean to pursue happiness then? Could it be to seek the desires and the passions of the heart? Well, Jeremiah records this in uh, his, uh, 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 as he wrote his book, the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 9, he says, the heart is deceitful, deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? See, because of sin, the heart of mankind is cold and to God is a heart that rejects God. And because of it rejects God, a cold heart desires the things of the world. And Matthew records this words of Jesus in chapter 6, starting in verse 19. He says, Lay not up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moth and rust do corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, where thieves do not break nor steal. For your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. See, a, whole, a cold heart of a fleshly nature we have Desire desires the worldly treasures. That will not last and ultimately will not satisfy. But that's the burden of mankind that's bound to sin. That's why we must be reborn to a new life in Jesus Christ. Jesus sets us free from the bonds of sin. Therefore, the prophet Ezekiel writes about this transformation that occurs when a person comes to faith in the Messiah, which is Jesus Christ. He writes this in Ezekiel chapter 36, starting in verse 26. He says, uh, this was God's words recorded by Ezekiel. Those who come to faith in Jesus, the Messiah, a new heart also will I give you, a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in you and cause you to walk in my statues and you shall keep my judgments and do them. See my brethren with a new transformed heart we desire new things. We forsake the worldly treasures that will decay and fade and we now desire heavenly treasures that will last. Apostle Paul writes to Timothy couple letters in his first letter Timothy chapter 6 starting verse 17 he says charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy that they do good that they be rich in good works ready to distribute willing to communicate laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that that may lay hold on eternal life well, this is the word of the Lord, my brethren. Thanks be to God. A ruler once asked Jesus what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. He told Jesus he had kept all the commandments, probably expecting Jesus to confirm him. And yet Jesus says this, record Luke's Gospel, chapter 18, verse 22. He says, Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all thou hast, Distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. See, pursuing happiness is not about seeking worldly passions and desires of the heart. No, rather it's about laying hold on eternal life in Jesus, storing up treasures in heaven as we commit to following Jesus. 
and therefore be an example in word and deed for others to follow. As Matthew records in chapter 5, verse 16, says, let your, these are Jesus' words, Matthew records these, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And it ports us to the Great Commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you, and lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen, he says. Well, a transformed heart by faith in Jesus Christ, following the path Jesus sets before us, sharing the word of God with others, fulfilling our purpose on earth to glorify God. As Isaiah recorded that in chapter 43, verse 7, is, uh, words of God, even everyone that is called by my name, the Lord says, for I've created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Well, that's what it means to pursue happiness, my brethren. Seeking after Jesus Christ, pursuing after your, your, um, your, your purpose in life. Your purpose being created for God's glory. And that's where we're going out making disciples, sharing the word of truth, uh, that fulfilling uh, and, and storing up treasures in heaven, your purpose, my brethren. That's what it means to pursue happiness. Well, it was July 1776, a Declaration of Independence had been declared in the colonies of the ringing of church and courthouse bells, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness endowed by God, through which all men can be treated as equal, just as they are created equal. A life that loves God with all our heart, mind, and soul brings forth liberty through the righteousness of truth found in Jesus Christ where God's spirit of liberty dwells. That true liberty gives us the desire, yea, the capacity to love all people as ourselves and bring about equal treatment of mankind. And that points us to pursue true happiness where we get hold of eternal life, store up treasure in heaven as we follow Jesus and live a life of example for others to follow. Oh, well, my brother, in the siege that took place here, the Yorktown at the battlefield, at the time was on, the war was ongoing. The outcome of that war had not yet been decided. But the true war of mankind, the internal war of the spirit, penned into our declaration, has already been won by God and exclaimed to us all. Will you share in the victory today, my brethren, with God's given right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Amen.